Working on a large Stuart model steam plant, part three, seating the water in that valve. And what's all this brass got to do with it? Nothing at all. The other day I travelled from East Yorkshire to West Yorkshire, and while I was on my way there, I called in to see Chris English at CME Engineering, and he gave me all this lot. Very useful things to have in the workshop. Lots of bits of brass. After I left Chris's place, laden with all this brass, I went to Blackgates Engineering. I bought some boiler banding, some paint, and some balls. I think we'll start with the paint. This is some Great Western Railway Loco Green, and I always keep a good stock of this, because I paint my engines this colour frequently. Once I asked Matt, who works at Blackgates Engineering, if he had any stainless steel balls, once the mirth subsided, I came out of the shop with some boiler banding, some paint, and the aforementioned balls. If you continue watching this series, you'll realise why I needed this boiler banding, so I'm going to put this on one side, and get back to work on the Southworth duplex pump. While I was in Blackgates Engineering, I remembered, of course, that Blackgates Engineering are the sole distributors for castings and parts to build these fine engines. Since the last episode, these small valves have all been in an acid bath, and now I've rinsed them with water so there's no more acid remaining, and they're looking a lot cleaner. Looking at these valves more closely, I noticed that the shape part below the actual valve part was a bit big on all of them, so I ground a bit off on the belt sander. You must be thinking, well, why did I need the balls? If I've already got the poppet valves, then they're OK. Well, maybe they're not. So I just thought I would have a look into whether or not it was a practical proposition to change the valve chamber to take these balls. But unfortunately, in the main body of the water valve chest, there are crossbars to restrict the amount of travel on the original valves. When I put the part back in place on top of these valves, you can see what the problem is. The balls are too big and they're touching the crossbars and it's no good at all. I would have to remachine this part that you're looking at, the flat plate on top of the cylinders. Even though these quarter inch balls are phosphor bronze, not stainless steel, I still made a new label out that said stainless balls and put the phosphor bronze ones in with the stainless steel ones because it's very easy to see which is which. Back now to the other valves, the ones that have always been sticking or leaking. I'm giving them a really good clean, making sure they are perfectly clean, leaving them without any pieces of silicone rubber stuck to them. We shall see in the fullness of time whether this is going to be successful. Each one of these valves are numbered so you know which one went in which hole. What I have to do now is grind in the valves and just make sure that they seal perfectly. And this was the point when I realised that they were a little bit tight in the hole to start with. And that's why I ended up removing some of the metal from the parts of the valves that sit down in the holes. I've done this before on other Southworth pump valves and it's been successful, so I'll see whether it is on this one. You can see here as I try and take the valve out of the hole, the shape part that sits down inside the hole seems to be prone to sticking. So, after cleaning it off on the belt sander very, very carefully, I finished it off on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, and I did this to all the valves, and it took ages. But now I can pop the valves into the holes and pull them out of the holes very easily. All I need to do now is lap each of the valves to make sure the valve part is actually watertight. In this clip I'm tipping some tea cut into one of these red containers, but I'm not just going to use tea cut to lap the valves, I'm going to mix this with a very small amount of fine valve grinding paste. This valve grinding paste is designed for the automotive industry for grinding car valves into cylinder heads. As this fine valve grinding paste in its normal form is mixed with grease, it's a bit thick. So in the lid of the valve grinding paste tin, I added some tea cut and mixed it all together, which diluted the grease and made it much easier to lap the valves in this way. It actually took a lot longer than you see here. I did a really good job and I kept checking it. And when I finally got a nice shiny line, both on the valve seat and around the valve, then I knew that everything was going to be fine. We shall see. In this close-up, as I remove the valve, you can see a clear black mark around the valve seat. And this is because the teacup mixed with the valve grinding paste is doing its stuff and grinding in the valve. The final part of the job on each valve was to thoroughly clean the seat and the valve one more time. Then I repeated the process for all of the others. And after each valve was lapped in place, I cleaned the seat and valve thoroughly and then blasted it with some switch cleaner. Switch cleaner is a powerful solvent in an aerosol can. 
So why did I use switch cleaner? Well, because I have some. I had a few tins of this stuff left over from the time when I used to repair and rebuild Hammond organs. Note in this clip how discoloured the tea cut and grinding paste mixture is. I'm quite confident that these valves will be watertight. The next thing I need to do, which I'm going to feature in the next episode, but I'll start it in this one, is make a gasket. I often make gaskets in this way. I press the part down onto an ink pad, as you see me doing here, and I thoroughly coat it in ink, and then I quickly press the entire part once again onto a piece of gasket material, and this is what you get. It's not a perfect image, but it shows me where the holes need to be. All I need to do now is punch out the holes, but that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.